Hello everyone, uh, my name is Inês Machado. I'm a research associate at King's College London, and I'm going to talk to you about our work, Quality Aware Senior Cardiac MR Reconstruction and Analysis from Undersampled Case-Based Data. So our heart has an important job. Uh, in a nutshell, it works with our lungs to load our blood with oxygen, then pumps that oxygen rich blood throughout our body to feed our organs. But when the heart muscle becomes weak and cannot pump blood well enough to meet the body's needs, we call it heart failure. So there are many numbers and many parameters that we can use to measure how well or how poorly a person is doing with heart failure such as a cardiac chamber volumes and uh, ejection fraction. Uh, ejection fraction is a measurement of how much blood the left ventricle of the heart pumps out at the beat by beat paces. So the way we measure ejection fraction is we get a series of what we call the short axis views. So essentially we are going to cut parallel slices through the left ventricle of the heart, like a loaf of bread. And those images give us a circular image of the left ventricle. So we are going to be able to see how big the heart is when it's most full at end diastole and how small it gets at end systole when it is ejecting the blood. So what we have is a grid of the left ventricle. So there are going to be 10 rows of images, each representing a different slice of the heart from the base of the left ventricle out to the apex. And the columns uh, represent different phases across the cardiac cycle. So usually we get 50 images across the cardiac cycle. And after segmentation, uh, ejection fraction corresponds to the difference of the volume of the left ventricle at end diastole and then systole divided by the volume at end diastole. So an ejection fraction of 65%, for example, means that 65% uh, um, of the total amount of blood in the left ventricle is pumped out with each heartbeat. So normal ejection fraction is about 50 to 75% according to the American Heart Association. So senior cardiac MRI acquisition is slow and there has been much research uh, interest in accelerating the scan without compromising the high resolution and uh, image quality requirements. So in this work, we propose an end-to-end -end and quality aware framework for cardiac MRI that combines image acquisition and reconstruction with a downstream task, such as segmentation, volume curve analysis, and estimation of cardiac functional parameters. So the goal is to reduce scan time by acquiring only a fraction of case-based data to enable the reconstruction of images that can pass quality control checks and at the same time produce reliable estimates of cardiac functional parameters. The framework consists of a deep learning model for the reconstruction of 2D plus T uh, cardiac cine MR images from undersampled data an image quality control step to detect good quality reconstructions. So this is followed by a deep learning model for B uh, vitriangular segmentation and a quality control step to detect good quality segmentations. And finally, automated calculation of cardiac functional parameters. So as case space uh, profiles are acquired, images are continually reconstructed and pass through these quality control checks. And then the simulated acquisition uh, terminates uh, when the reconstructed image passes all quality control checks. So first we simulated an active acquisition process by creating case space data from all slices of CNA images. And then uh, we generate a synthetic phase and a radial uh, golden angle uh, sampling pattern to simulate undersampled case space data. So this data contains increasing numbers of profiles that correspond to scan times between one to 30 seconds in steps of one second. And then we compare two reconstruction algorithms. So the non-uniform fast Fourier transform and a deep cascade of convolutional neural networks. Then we analyze the quality of each reconstructed image. So this quality control step was framed as a binary classification problem using a ResNet classification network. So an expert cardiologist uh, generated binary image quality labels from 225 images of different levels of undersampling. 80% were used for training and validation of the classification network and 20% were using for were used for testing. So the ResNet network was trained for 200 epochs and the loss function was the binary uh, cross entropy. For the segmentation, we use a pre-trained uh, UNAT-based um, architecture for automatic segmentation of the left ventricle, right ventricle, and myocardium from all short axis slices and all frames through the cardiac cycle. Uh, the data set was split into three uh, subsets, so containing 3,975 uh, images for training. 300 for validation and 600 for testing. The training data set was augmented in order to cover a wide range of uh, geometrical variations in terms of heart pose and size. 
and all images were resampled and cropped to the same size before uh, being fed uh, into the network. So the segmentation process is followed by a segmentation quality control step based on the reverse classification accuracy. So in RCA first, image uh, registration is performed between the test image and the set of 20 preselected template images with known segmentations. And then the transformed test image segmentation is compared to the segmentations of the atlas. So the segmentation quality metrics that uh, we use were the dye similarity coefficient, mean surface distance, root mean square surface distance, and Hausdorff distance. And finally, we train an SVM binary classifier using the quality metrics to discriminate between poor and good quality segmentations. So as soon as we have the segmentations, the volumes were calculated by multiplying the number of voxels by the voxel volume. Uh, the maximum value corresponds to the volume at end diastole and the minimum to the volume at end systole. And then injection fraction is the difference of these two volumes divided by the maximum volume. So we evaluated our framework using a cohort of 200 healthy subjects and 70 cardiac patients from the UK Biobank. This data was obtained on a 1.5 Tesla MRI scanner. The short axis image acquisition consists of 10 image slices with a matrix size of 208 by 187 and a slice thickness of 8 millimeters, covering both the ventricles from the base to the apex. So uh, each uh, cardiac cycle corresponds to 50 time frames. The image reconstruction model and the segmentation model were trained using an additional set of 3,975 uh, images from the UK Biobank and pixel wise segmentations of the left ventricle blood pool, right ventricle blood pool, and left ventricle myocardium for both end diastolic frames and end systolic frames were manually performed to act as ground truth segmentations. And then the segmentation model was evaluated using uh, 600 different subjects from the UK Biobank for intra domain testing and two other data sets for cross-domain testing. So the ACDC data set, which consists of 100 subjects from one side, two different scanners, and the BSCMR data set, which consists of 599 subjects from six sites and nine scanners. So we validated our method in uh, two ways. First, we evaluated the ability of the full pipeline to detect good quality image reconstructions and good quality image segmentations uh, during simulated active uh, acquisition of 270 cases. So here we have examples of image reconstructions and undersampling trajectories as a function of the scan time using the NUFFT and the DCCNN model. And for this subject, the two quality control steps were passed at a scan time of 10 seconds with the NUFFT and four seconds with the DCCNN reconstruction model. So here we report the average balanced accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity of the image quality control training model. The quality of the images was evaluated uh, evaluated with a mean absolute error, peak signal to noise ratio, and a structure similarity index. So these indexes were calculated between the fully sampled image and the undersampled image that passed all quality control checks uh, with the lowest scan time. And then the quality of the segmentations was quantified using the dice coefficients between the segmentations from the fully sampled image and the segmentations derived uh, from our pipeline. And then we have the mean and standard deviation of scan times at which the reconstructed images passed all quality control checks for each reconstruction method. So here we have the planned Altman plots for the volume of the left ventricle at ED frame on the top left and the S frame on the top right. Uh, on the bottom, we have the same for the right ventricle. So the, the X axis corresponds to the mean between estimates and the Y axis corresponds to the difference between estimates. So each dot compares estimates between the fully sampled image to estimates derived from the first undersampled image passing all quality control checks with the lowest scan time. And in green, uh, uh, we show these differences for healthy subjects and in red for cardiac patients. So this work demonstrates the feasibility of a deep learning uh, based framework for automated quality control active acquisition of undersampled CNSCMR data without pr a previously defined uh, undersampling factor. Our results show uh, that by using a DCCNN for scenic cardiac uh, MRI reconstruction, we can pass these quality control checks after approximately four seconds of simulated acquisition. And we think that this work could have clinical utility as it allows to reduce uh, redundancies in the CMR acquisition and still providing diagnostic uh, quality images and robust uh, estimates of uh, functional parameters. So thank you very much uh, for listening and hope to see you uh, in person uh, next year.